Okay, why don't we get started? Um, welcome everyone. My name is Mehmet Yaya. I'm the current president of TACAM. Uh, we are pleased to organize this webinar on the political activism, and we are happy to have three Turkish American speakers who share their experiences, their opinions on American politics. Before I introduce our esteemed speakers, I would like to talk briefly about the overarching uh, purpose of this webinar. And I would like to start with Turkish Americans today face a great deal, at, uh, deal of adversity in the United States. Apart from the up and down relationship between Turkish and US governments, Turkish businesses are being vandalized, national retailers remove Turkish products from their shelves, and school districts make decisions that put our children in difficult situations of expressing their Turkish heritage. Furthermore, legislative bodies pass laws that directly impact Turkish Americans and our children. As respected members of the American society, okay. Turkish Americans have positively contributed to the diversity of this nation for the last century. And we need to continuously educate the Americans, our friends, neighbors, our public officers and political representatives so that they are aware of our proud Turkish American identity. Nonprofit, charitable, cultural associations such as TAKAM serves this purpose partially. Turkish Americans also need to organize further under political action committees solely dedicated to this purpose. Now, I would like to uh, present you the speakers who will share their experiences during 2020 election cycle, importance of political activism at the local level, and how to make difference as Turkish Americans in the US politics, locally, regionally, and nationally. Hülya Erol Garbut is a longtime supporter of TAKAM, chair of the TAKAM Outreach Committee, and she was instrumental receiving many congressional recognitions, celebratory letters from congressional members. She's also an elected delegate to the Democratic Convention in Michigan, as well as the vice president and assistant treasurer of the newly formed National Coalition of Turkish American Women Action Political Action Committee. She will moderate the rest of the discussion. Jaylan Rowe received plenty of media attention during 2020 primaries, running for election to the Massachusetts House of Representatives to represent the 12th Worcester District. Although she didn't get the nomination during the primaries, she inspired many Turkish Americans, especially women, with her candidacy and her impressive campaign. She's also an executive committee member of the National Coalition of Turkish American Women Political Action Committee. And finally, uh, the last but not the least, Dr. Onur Arugaslan, a professor of finance and PNC endowed chair at Western Michigan University. He has also ran during the 2020 elections for the Board of Education, Matawan uh, School District in Kalamazoo, Michigan. He has been a prime example of how elected officials can make a difference in our local communities. Although he, he will be leaving the Board of Education at the end of the year, He's invited to join the Matawan Public Education Foundation to continue serving the children in his districts. So without any delay, I'll turn to Julia to moderate this wonderful discussion. Well, thank you so much, Mahmoud. Um, and I am so excited and honored to be here today. And I want to thank you. Thank you each of you for taking time out of your Sunday morning to join us. And um, before I wanted to introduce our, uh, to our official speaker, I have a, a special guest who I would love to introduce and allow the opportunity to speak. Although he is not uh, Turkish, however, he has devoted his life to Turkish Americans and has years of leadership experience. He is the president of the Turkish Coalition of America and has worked tirelessly to educate and promote the interest of the Turkish American community. Please welcome my good friend and colleague, Lincoln McCarty. Oh, thank you, Julia Hunnam. Um, it's an honor being here and I wanna congratulate on talking for organizing this and uh, congratulate you for taking time um, in, um, in the preparation. I also want to give a, um, a special applaud to Jaylon and to Onur. Um, it takes a lot of guts and courage to run for public office. They are the pioneers, they are the role models. Um, 
okay, they um, didn't achieve what they wanted, but um, they made progress. We're getting their close. We're getting closer to our goal because of their dedication, sacrifices, and hard work. And I hope both of them will um, run again because they've laid a foundation this past year. Um, just briefly, um, I want to highlight the importance of political involvement. Um, Mamet has pointed out that um, the, Tur uh, the Turkish people have contributed significantly to the welfare of the United States of America. Uh, the uh, Turkish immigrants are role models. Um, you don't hear about Turkish crime. Um, Tur uh, Turkish people in all walks of life have been extremely successful. Uh, they pay their taxes. Um, uh, they have excelled in their professions. Um, they have excelled in arts and business and academia. The only area where they haven't excelled is uh, the political arena. And I realize this is not part of the um, Turkish culture of being politically involved. However, it's part of the American culture. And um, 40 years ago, um, you, um, you had a very, very small Turkish um, population. Um, that's no longer the case. You have the numbers, you have the successes. Um, if we want to see balanced dialogue in the political arena, if we want to stop the harassment of um, Tur Turkish Americans, and if we want to um, be involved in decision-making, um, Turkish Americans have to be involved in the political arena. And that means we got to get Turkish Americans elected to public office. Um, politics is all personal. Um, if you don't have representation in the um, political circles, your voice is not heard. There have been only 12 Turkish Americans ever elected to public office, all on the um, local level. We were hoping that Jaylon would have been the first Turkish American elected to a state assembly, and she still may be. I'm hoping she'll run again. Um, and, um, and we don't have anybody um, in Congress. And I, I'd like to conclude, um, I was doing my graduate work um, back in 1974 at George Washington University. Um, after um, Turkey intervened in Cyprus, one member of Congress was able to stir up the whole body of Congress against Turkey. And um, this individual was John Bradamus, the first Greek American ever elected to Congress. And he had been elected a few years earlier or maybe two years earlier. Um, so he was a um, newcomer in Congress, but, and, and the only Greek American at that time in Congress, but he was part, he became part of the club and look what damage he did in the US-Turkey relations of just being in the club. Um, the only way we're going to have balanced dialogue, the only way we're going to have stability in the U.S.-Turkey relationship is having Turkish Americans in Congress, um, both in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And um, Jaylon and Onur are the pioneers of helping the community to get to that level. Uh, it may be a few more years, but we have to focus on that. Um, otherwise, um, this harassment, this bashing is going to continue. Um, so um, have a wonderful session. I'm looking forward to hearing from everybody. And uh, Hodia, thank you again for um, having me to say a few words. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lincoln. Thank you. Um, now I wanted to introduce you again, Jaylan Rowe. And um, we have some questions. And, um, Jaylan is a local business owner and advocate in the 12th district of the Massachusetts. She ran this year for the Democratic Party for the open seat, Massachusetts House of Representatives. I wanted to thank you being here today and to speak with us. And uh, we supported you throughout your campaign in Michigan. I want you to know that. Um, and of course, we are very proud of the example you set for Turkish American women nationwide. So we do have some questions prepared for you. And um, number one, how are you doing today? 
Uh, I want to know, we wanted to know uh, about yourself. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity and I really appreciate all the support that I received from the Turkish American community throughout the United States during this past year um, when I ran for office. Um, sadly, I didn't win, but um, like Lincoln said, you know, there was a lot of momentum within the Turkish American community. There's a lot of work being done, thanks to a lot of people on this call right now. Um, and I'm doing good. I actually am very excited. Um, last night, I was actually phone banking for Kaplan Hasanolo, who's also another Turkish American. He's running for um, town selectman here in Massachusetts at Hopedale. So I'm excited. I'm still, you know, being politically engaged and, and um, uh, I have a lot of hope for our community for the future. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go between you and Anur. Okay. So that way uh, we get the similar uh, experiences we will hear from both of you. And uh, Dr. Anur Orugu Aslan, a professor of finance and commercial law at Western Michigan University, Howard College of Business. And he serves as a director of the personal financial pl uh, planning program. This past election, Onur ran as a candidate for a non-partition non position of the trustee of the Matheven Consolidated Schools Board of Education in Michigan. And uh, thank you for joining us and it's an honor to have you. Um, and the question again for you is the same, how you are doing today? And we'd love to know a little bit about yourself. I'm doing really well, thank you very much. Um, before I talk about myself, um, again, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who supported my campaign. Turkish Americans um, and Lincoln personally, thank you so much for all your support. Um, other than that, I'm teaching three online courses and it's the end of the semester is coming up and I have a lot of grading to do and other things. But um, I'm, I'm excited about the election results, even though mine didn't go well. Um, in our county, almost all positions went to Democrats, um, flipped a few seats. Um, Michigan didn't go to Trump. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy, I'm positive. Thank you, and um, Jaylan. Uh, so did you prepare for your campaign and also what inspired you to run for the office? So what inspired me um, was that for the, well, I first, I graduated with political science from in, um, in international affairs from Northeastern University. So I actually interned for a congresswoman many, many years ago in college. Um, I worked for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for several years. And then um, about five years ago, I joined the Metro West Commission on the Status of Women. So I actually um, have been, every month we get together and we advocate for legislation related to women and girls here in Massachusetts. And so I built lots of relationships with different legislators um, during that time and really got to see, um, you know, meet some that work really hard for their communities and then others that just, you know, weren't taking it as seriously. And then my district in particular, I was questioning, you know, um, I was wondering why my le legislator was just not present in so many meetings that I was going to attending. And so I was really inspired by the legislators um, working really hard and, and decided to um, run for office. Um, and, and I do want to mention that because people often, you know, think that you just jump into running for office, but I will say that there's so many opportunities in our communities to be on a commission. In Massachusetts, we have youth commissions, we have women's commissions, elderly commissions. There's so many commissions that are volunteer opportunities for you to just get your feet wet and to really understand how the process works. And then, um, you know, if, if you, you're brave enough, and I hope that you are, to run for office. So that's how I got started. And then how, and, and did you prepare before your campaign? 
you know, so in Massachusetts, there's a few organizations that help you run for office and nationwide, there's lots of organizations. Um, there's Jetpack here, um, there's Mass Alliance, there's Emerge um, nationwide. There's also New Immigrants, um, or excuse me, New Americans. There's a lot of organizations. If you're interested in running for office, they'll actually help you and advise you. And some of them are just like weekend classes. Some of them are six month classes. So depending on your schedule, but there's definitely groups helping. And I did take advantage of that. Thank you. And Honor and I wanna to ask you the same questions. What inspire you to run for Board of Education? So, um... It's gonna be a long story. Um, I'll try to cut it short, but back in 2016, my children were preparing for a competition called Destination Imagination. Mm -hmm. And with the parents, so when the children were practicing, I was you know, having conversations with the parents of other children and turned out that we were all progressives uh, bothered by what Trump was saying in his campaign trail, banning Muslims from this country and all the other stupid things he was talking about. So um, we really got into politics thanks to Trump. I mean, not only me, my wife too. We, uh, with those parents, we formed um, Kalamazoo 2020 squad with the goal of, you know, making sure that Donald Trump is not re-elected in 2020. And we got a lot of help from Indivisible Guide um, and other resources around the country. I watch uh, the Young Turks all the time. I'm proud of Cenk Uygur and um, all his compatriots. And um, uh, my oldest daughter is a high school senior and she also got into uh, politics around the same time we did and um, she had internships with the local state representatives and the state senator. She's actually the most political um, in, in my family and, and she's applying to colleges now and hoping to study political science. Um, in college. And um, there was an opening in Marawan School Board in March 2019. And we had a friend uh, who is on the board. And she let us know. And I decided to apply for it. Um, there were three candidates. And the board chose me to replace the, the president of the board who had left due to family reasons. So, um, uh, so I started working on the board in March, 2019. And um, yeah, there's a lot that can be done um, for the Turks and for you know progressive causes. So, um, and there are many positions where th there is no opponent, like the county treasurer, not the county, but um, our township's treasurer is a lady and she has been, you know, uh, running unopposed for the last three, four election cycles. She's a Republican. So um, it's not just school boards. There are opportunities to run for office all over the place. And um, you have to start somewhere Name recognition is really important. So I'm, I'm definitely considering running again in two years. And uh, it's almost like I'm not stopping to campaign. I will continue to campaign. It's fun too. Okay, thank you. And uh, Jaylan, uh, as a candidate uh, running on behalf of the Democratic Party, did you feel you had a large amount of support from National Democratic Party? or in the, or the Massachusetts Democratic Party? So I, um, because of my work with the commission, I had a lot of really great support with um, some state senators and um, state representatives, um, state committee, Democratic state committee members, 
um, and behind the scenes, some uh, congressional leaders um, definitely were supporting. Um, but there was also, you know, sadly within the Democratic Party, I think there were some people who were stirring the pot of of my identity and which was really um, unnecessary and something that I've been working with um, on the with the Democratic state um, party right now and talking about how we can move forward productively. But I did re receive a lot of support, which I'm, I'm really grateful for. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna ask another question. It's just following to that. Did you feel you had a support from your fellow Turkish Americans? Oh, absolutely, I did. Um, I'm very grateful for the support that I received um, from the Turkish American community and you know, my family, I have family and friends all over the United States, Turkish American family. So it was wonderful. And I, I, I am forever grateful to everyone who supported me. And, and I will say, you know, um, when people make donations, um, it's public knowledge, it's public record. And so people saw a lot of Turkish names on who was donating to me. And, and I think we really um, pleasantly surprised people. So the Turkish community um, really uh, made an impression. Thank you. Um, Alnur, so my question is, I know, I know you weren't really belong to, a, you know, you didn't run as a party, uh, uh, and how was, who, who got your, uh, like, how did you get support? Yeah, I, um, I had to make a decision, even though I know all of the local um, democratic politicians personally, and they, they did offer to help me. They said, we can do phone banking together. Um, I live in a heavily Republican district. Um, in the precincts uh, where people voted for me, Trump's vote was, you know, anywhere from 52 to 60 percent. So, um, I mean, there are, you know, there were six candidates for uh, three open seats, uh, but I, I made the decision not to, you know, appear to Democrats or get any Democrats open endorsement in order not to piss off the Trump supporters. And um, I'm an electrical engineer and um, a nerd. So I looked at the pressing results, the percentage voted who voted for Trump versus percentage who voted for me and I ran a regression or a couple of regressions. And yeah, it's, it's not surprising. Where Trump did well, I didn't do well and vice versa. So I think mine was the right decision. I think I would have gotten even worse results if I had, you know, come out as a, as a Democrat. But, you know, in two years, since this strategy didn't work, so maybe in two years I will try to run as a you know heavily endorsed Democrat and see what happens. Yeah. All right, and uh, Jaylan, now for you the question is: How much of your own money did you spend on financing your campaign? So I was told that I would need to raise $50,000 in order to run for um, state representative. So um, I'm happy that I, I, I put in about 20,000 of my own money, um, but I ended up raising about $87,000. So I'm grateful that a large chunk of it, the majority of it um, came from donors um, and a lot of the donors were Turkish American. I had over 400 people donate to my campaign and some people donated $5 and some people donated $1,000. Um, the max here in Massachusetts is $1,000 per year um, per person. So I'm, I'm grateful for all of it and everything in between. And uh, I'm gonna, this is like a continued question. So I'm gonna get a little bit more clarification in here. And uh, how much money would you say that you raised through the Democratic Party? Well, I, because my mine was a primary, um, so 
some Democrats supported my opponents. Um, so I, I don't, I mean, there were some legislators who donated to me, but um, I don't know how much of it came from Democrats versus Republicans. And I would imagine most of it came from people who were progressive Democrats. Okay, and um, do you know how much you raised through the Turkish Americans? Um, I believe it was 15,000 to 20,000. Um, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it was a significant amount. Okay, all right. And, and I'm gonna ask you uh, one more question. So when you raise money, so when you were running, so obviously the money needed a lot, and how did you uh, use this money? Where, where did you utilize it in your campaign? So I would, I personally used it for um, a campaign manager, which I strongly, strongly recommend. Um, and then also I ended up having money to do um, four to six, a rounds of mailers. Um, so some people got four, some people got six, and then also hire more staff. So I had um, a field director, I had um, some other again, um, college students and young professionals um, that were being paid as well. So I, I put it towards um, marketing. Um, we did social media um, ads as well, and also staffing. Okay, and then um, I'm going to ask you again, this is all continue question I didn't want to ask. So is there any other resources that you utilize during your campaign besides that or? We advertised in the newspaper as well. Um, I'm trying to think, social media, newspaper, mailers, people, I think that's where the money went to. Okay, all right. Uh, Onur, I have a similar question to you, and I know it's a little bit maybe different because you run for the, um, the board, the school board. So uh, now what, um, I remember I reached out to you um, and provide a support, and I know that uh, I talked to Lincoln McCarty briefly about you and I wanted to see, you know, like how, where did you get your uh, most support and, and, and how you utilize all of it? Yeah, um, where I live, um, school board trustees don't run, you know, expensive yeah. elections. So um, my understanding was that I didn't need to raise too much money and I wasn't gonna spend too much either. If you don't spend more than a thousand dollars, then you don't have to report um, your expenses. Um, I spent a total of $400 and um, I printed brochures that cost uh, around 200. I had some yard signs made. That was around $130. And then I gave three Facebook ads, um, one for only one day, one for five days. And then I figured I may as well give a 30 day one, which ran from October 3rd through November 3rd. And I spent 70, around $70 on Facebook. 300 of that I spent my own money and 100 came from Mr. Lincoln McCarty. Thank you very much. Um, next time, I think I will spend more. Um, because of COVID, I, I was able to visit only maybe 600 houses and put my uh, brochures on their doors. Um, the next time I plan to visit more houses and hopefully I will be able to talk to the people and not just leave brochures and leave. Um, yeah. Okay. Hidya Hanum, I, I do want to say, um, Onur Bey, thank you for the reminder. I did put up lawn signs as well and we did have brochures. So we did several rounds of brochures as well. Um, doing lit drops. So that's where our money went as well. 
Uh huh. I see. And um, so I wanted to see. Um, I have another question. This is, I think it's kind of important. Um, so I, I know Jaylan, uh, especially with you, with the current cultural tension in the United States with Armenian. Did you feel that uh, presented a challenge during your campaign for the office? And if so, how did you come back such obstacles? So um, for the majority of my campaign, me being Turkish American wasn't an issue up until the last few weeks. And I will say though, you know, um, there was actually, I had Armenian Americans, Greek Americans, Turkish Americans, Italian Americans actually support me. I mean, there was a lot of support that I received. So it wasn't necessarily all negative, um, but the last few weeks, you know, people kept asking my thoughts on the Armenian genocide. And I kept thinking, how does this relate to um, being a state representative and issues that people care about, like healthcare and the environment. Um, and so, you know, as Turkish Americans, I, I keep questioning, you know, why do we have to keep discussing something that happened or, you know, just issue, the, the things that happened between the Turks and Armenians a uh, hundred years ago, how is this relevant today? And, and I, I love talking about the contributions that the Turkish Americans are making now and, and my contributions to my community. And so unfortunately it did get negative towards the end. Uh, or can you clarify a little bit more about, you know, like what do you mean exactly in negative? Um, so there was a democratic state committee member who's half Armenian who sent emails to Democrats in the district um, you know, just, uh, she actually Googled all my donors and if they were Turkish American or Muslim American and she had issues with them, she actually made a list of all the people she had issues with and sent this out to people, which is just uncalled for. And so um, I'm talking with the president of the democratic state uh, right now and talking about, you know, why was this allowed and how, you know, how do we move forward so that other Turkish Americans in Massachusetts don't have to go through something like this because it's just, it's just wrong. Okay, all right. Um, well, uh, and owner, did you have uh, similar uh, issues when you uh, run, you know, did you have any cultural uh, did you find that Armenian community or any other community that might create attention for you? No, um, there aren't many Armenian Americans here. Um, in fact, yeah, most people are just good old white people. Um, no, no distinct um, minority with you know with a sizable. Uh, community. So, um, but, uh, you know, especially not in Kalamazoo County, but um, people were voting for me from the neighboring uh, Van Buren County. And it's, it's a more rural county. And, um, you know, I think if my name was Tom, I would have gotten, you know, a thousand more votes. If my name was Mary, then I would have gotten 2,000 more votes. And I 100% believe this. Um, because people are, you know, they don't have time, they don't care, they don't research. They just look at the names and choose three candidates. So Mark, Ted, and Vicky won, and Honor, Roman, and Kila lost. So. The, the more typical American name you have, the more likely that people will vote for you. Not even the last name, it's the first name, I believe. And that's my observation. Yes, please. I think that's a great point is, you know, our names matter, but I do think that there's also opportunities in that. And that, you know, I am part of the North Borough Democratic Town Committee. 
And I absolutely love the group and the group has been so supportive of me. And I think this is why Turkish Americans, we really need to be present in our, what, you know, our democratic town committees our school committees and just attending. People often think that it's, you know, a lot of effort and a lot of work and how do you get your foot in the door? And a lot of the number one way to get involved in politics is just show up. And there's a lot of opportunities to show up to these groups so that they could know who we are so that they could be supportive and, and, and get to know us. I, it's, I can't stress enough how important it is to get involved in your local um, town groups, whatever the groups may be. Okay. Um, now I wanted to go back to Jaylan again. So what did you learn from your time running for office? How much time do we have? Um, I learned a lot of things. Um, I learned about fundraising. I learned how awesome the Turkish American community is throughout the country and how we really rallied, you know, everybody really rallied to support me and I'm grateful for that. I learned um, that, you know, I learned what really goes behind the scenes on elections um, and that it's really important to get support from different groups. Um, and I'm grateful that I was able to do that. I learned that there's a lot of young people very interested in politics. I'm very happy that there was a lot of high school, college, college students, young professionals, um, immigrants, people who've never gotten involved, got involved in my campaign, saw how it's done, and I'm, I'm cheering them on. And I hope that they, you know, they go on and run for office. And there's so many different um, ways to run in the local, state, or federal level. Um, people often think of Congress, but really, a lot of the local decisions are more impactful. So we need a lot of people on the local level getting involved. Um, I just, you know, I, I learned a lot and I'm grateful for this experience. Okay, and Onur, what would you say about that? What yeah, I learned a lot too. Um, first of all, um, you should not overestimate people and assume they know anything. Um, some people that I thought, you know, were close friends or acquaintances did not know that I was on the board, did not know that I was running, even though, you know, I'm putting posts on Facebook about that. And <laughs> so, or, or that people will vote for the nonpartisan section because, you know, ballots are long and some people just vote Democrat or Republican and then move on. There are all kinds of um, judges and trustees and proposals that are on the second page towards the end and some people don't even vote. So, you know, you need to educate your voters. You need to encourage them to vote and to vote early. And again, don't assume anybody knows anything. Other things are I learned are more like lessons. Um, I did not run an ad in the newspaper or um, a local magazine, maybe next time I should do that. I did not even get a website. I thought that, you know, everyone is on Facebook, Facebook ads would be enough. And I reached more than 5,000 people with my ads on Facebook, but um, wasn't enough. Um, I was contacted by Michigan Education Justice Coalition which is a you know, progressive group um, working to make sure that, you know, um, education is fair and for everyone. So I filled in their questionnaire. The local newspaper though, they were covering all kinds of local candidates and I contacted them and they said, no, we're not gonna cover your uh, race. So, um, you know, I may have been more aggressive with them. The, the League of uh, women voters, I'm sure Jaylan is uh, familiar with them. Um, I, I contacted them several times and just like a few weeks before the election, this lady emails me, oh, oops, I'm sorry, I missed your email, emails. So I didn't get a chance to go on uh, vote411.org, which is for the uh, League of Women Voters. So yeah. I learned a lot 
And hopefully I can use that for the next election. Okay, so now Jalen, I have a question now. This is it gets I think back exciting. So if you could go back to do things again, will you change anything you did before or during your campaign? That's a good question. So I've, I've been, you know, for the past several months talking to my former campaign manager and we kept, you know, thinking, what would we do differently? What would we do differently? And I think COVID definitely was difficult. COVID um, did not allow me to not do like the one-on-one -on -one interaction that typically needs to happen. I, th I do think that one-on-one -on -one interaction um, is key to changing people's minds, but I mean, we worked really hard. We did tons of phone banking. We did literature drops. Um, I, I guess what I would do differently is um, not during COVID time, but do door knocking. I can't stress how important that is, that one-on-one -on -one interaction with people. Okay, so the door knocking is the main thing. It is. We just drop literature off on people's doors without the door knocking because of COVID. But I do. My opponent did do door knocking, um, which my campaign uh, and I didn't feel that it was safe, um, particularly for the volunteers. So um, I do think that that um, had um, an impact. Okay. And Honor, what do you say about that if you go back? Yeah, I mean, um, so I already mentioned a few uh, regret. Uh, the two other uh, board members who were running with me, I, in the, in the beginning, I approached them and I said, do you want to run as a slate? Because um, those guys have been on the board for four years and eight years, respectively, and um, they have name recognition. They know many people in the district. And um, and they also go to church, which uh, brings a lot of votes. Um, with the Turks, we don't have that. Um, um, so, but they they didn't really uh, seem interested, even though you know we are good colleagues on the board. No major disagreements. Um, I couldn't convince them, so I had to um, do it by myself. Other than that, um, yeah, maybe next time come out as a Democrat and get endorsed by Democrats and see how that works. All right, and now um, this is my uh, last questions. And then after that, I wanted to ask everybody else if anyone has questions personally. Um, so the last question is, and, um, and, you know, we supported both of you because that was a great honor uh, to see you guys name. Uh, and, and the question is this, we will still support you if you run, but will you run again? That is number one question. And the second question is, um, what advice you will give uh, Turkish Americans, you know, like how involved they should be and what we should be looking and how we should start. So I'm starting with Jayla. Um, truthfully, I don't know if I'll run for office again. I, I am still part of the commission, so I'm still doing a lot of advocacy work, but we'll see. I, I don't know what the future holds. Um, my advice to the Turkish American community is please, please, please get involved. Um, go to your town selectman meeting and just listen. Um, go to your school board committee and just listen. You know, um, as Turkish Americans, some, you know, particularly for me, um, I'm, I can only relate to my own experience, but you know, I often wonder, oh, is this person not gonna like me because I'm Turkish American or Muslim American, whatever. Um, and at the end of the day, regardless of what your ethnicity is, one, you should, we, we should be very proud of who we are, where we come from, where our family comes from. But at the end of the day, every community member cares about issues like healthcare, like education, like the environment. And so there's so many similarities that we have with our neighbors that, um, 
that's how we build those coalitions. That's how we build those friendships. That's how we build the trust and, and those friendships that will lead, you know, lead to hopefully um, them supporting us when we run for office, regard, whether it's for the local level, state level or federal level. So please, please, please join, you know, even if it's the garden club, go to those meetings, go um, to your democratic town committee meetings, or if you're a Republican, do that too. It doesn't matter, but just start showing up. Um, that's really, really key. Thank you. Hello? Yes, um, I will definitely run. Um, now that I have had this conversation with you guys, I'm even more motivated. Um, for years, like on Facebook, I I was friends with only people that I knew from Turkey. I wasn't really opening up to the local community. And even though I made many friends here. So, you know, partly in order to, you know, increase my chances of getting elected, I um, I became Facebook friends with, you know, uh, maybe as many people as I had before as Facebook friends over the last couple of months. And I, so that actually made me, you know, more part of this community. I see how people are very similar to me. Um, I was kind of you know, keeping my distance, I guess, on, on the online sphere. And I saw that that was foolish. And um, yeah, I, I became more integrated with the people where I live. I love them more and I, have, I share many more things with them than I thought I did. So I think um, at the end of the day, you know, especially for a school board member, it's all about children and I see how people care about their children, what kind of sacrifices they make for their children. You see that on Facebook, you know, they drive for hours to take their children to a, you know, soccer game for one hour and then they drive back. And so, um, yeah, I think politics is for positive change and we have to do our part and we have to give back to the community. I have a good life here in this country and you know, I have to give back. So um, plus, if you are one of the people who are making the decisions which affect even not only your own children but the other children in your community, I think that's an enough reason to run. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and so now I have a question to all the attendees, I don't know if you, if any of you have any question to Honor or Jaylan. If so, this is the time. I see Fotash, Fotash Kochar raised the hand. Uh, please. Hi everyone, thank you so much for your time. Um, I have one question to Jaylan and one question to Honor. Um, to Jaylan, um, what was the, the moment, the day, um, or the week like when you decided that you have the skill set to do a good job and you have the courage to um, sort of face the, the adversity that comes with being in politics, um, you know, the challenges that comes with politics. And then to honor, um, you mentioned that you live in a mostly conservative um, region. Um, how did you balance your friendships with your politics? If there were any issues, you know, did you have an attitude that, um, you know, some you had to let go or um, did you sort of separate your conversations? Um, so Fatosh uh, Hanum, um, there's a statistic out there that says it, um, you have to ask a woman seven times before she'll actually run for office. And I would say for a woman with a unique name like Jaylon, it took probably like a mm, hundred people asking me to run for office. So it was not an easy decision. It was not an overnight decision. This was just manifesting years and years and years of should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy that I did because I, I 
I got to meet so many community members and really talk about issues that people cared about that weren't happening. So I'm grateful for this opportunity, but it was not an overnight decision. Yeah, thank you, Fatosh, uh, for your question. Um, I really, you know, um, was involved with the general elections and, you know, with Trump and all the Republicans, and I, I did not share anything political on my Facebook page. In my, um, you know, campaign page, you know, I, I had a platform that all kinds of voters would support quality education, community engagement, student wellness, um, maybe inclusion and diversity somewhere down there, not at the top. You know, just um, kind of trying to go under the radar, not to piss off any Trump supporters or Republicans. Um, in terms of my friendships, I have a few um, Republican friends, I have a few Trump supporter friends and, you know, you just don't talk politics with them. <laughs> you talk about other things. Um, and again, you know, Trump has made us almost hate Republicans and then the Republicans hate Democrats. I think that's going to go away once he's out of office. We will go back to normal relations. We will, you know, treat each other with more respect. This this kind of um, division hopefully will not last long. Okay, thank you. And um, April has a question uh, she put on the uh, chat. What is your suggestion on handling the Armenian issue for people who run for office? So I think Jaylan, this question comes to you. <laughs> First, I will say that just because somebody is Armenian doesn't mean that they automatically hate us and vice versa, right? I think I did have Armenian friends who had supported me, who put law on signs. So I just want to say that. Um, I do think, you know, this is a much larger conversation that we as a Turkish community need to have is, you know, um, our ancestors may have had the, may have had a lot of issues and a lot has ha may have happened back then, but at the end of the day, we live in the United States. We are neighbors with the Armenians. We care, our kids go to the same school. Our kids, you know, we care about the future. We have businesses. I, I do think that, that we need to move forward positively with all groups um, in our communities. I don't think we benefit um, from negativity at all. Um, so, I think building friendships and coalitions are important. I do think when issues arise, if negative issues of Turkish businesses um, being vandalized, we do have to bring it up. We do have to bring it up to our local leaders because they don't know what's happening. Um, but I do think we need to remember that we're here in the United States and, um, and we benefit more with having positive relations uh, with, with different groups. I do agree with that. I mean, uh, so I can give you just a few uh, ideas, you know, as I think a lot of people know that I'm also a realtor, right? So I have a customers right now um, who is um, Armenian and obviously he knows that I am from Turkey. Uh, and also more importantly, you know, like we have few um, agents in my office uh, that I see uh, every day almost, there are Armenian also. So, and I don't feel that, you know, that tension. Uh, I just think that, um, of course, there are some people probably um, more um, into the politics and, you know, I feel like we just have to find a um, mutual agreement maybe. Yes, please. And I will say this, in Massachusetts, every legislative session has 6,000 bills uh, that get introduced, 6,000. 
So even if, let's put aside the being Turkish for a second, even if we wanted to talk about education or let's talk about healthcare, there's 6,000 issues. My husband and I are not gonna agree with 6,000 issues. Just because we disagree with somebody on one topic doesn't mean we're not gonna agree with them on other topics. And I think we need to start finding those common grounds where we could build those positive relationships and then have productive conversations when we do disagree about stuff. But we don't benefit, I personally don't believe we benefit by just flat out hating somebody um, and not having productive relationships. It doesn't help us as a community. It doesn't help us individually. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions from anyone? Yeah, can I say something quickly about yeah. this? Um, back in 2003, um, I got together with uh, PhD students at my university here and we went to visit our congressman Fred Upton, who has been in office for 34 years. He's a Republican, although you know, he never advertises as such. He says he's bipartisan and blah, blah. Um, he, um, there was a bill in the Senate and House of Representatives at that time, which, you know, that there's always a, an Armenian genocide bill that they keep reheating and bringing over. Um, so, I, we went to talk to him and we, we were going to ask him not to vote for that, um, for the so-called genocide. And it was an interesting experience. He said, you know what? I don't know how I will vote, but I believe that you guys did it. So, I mean, this is a guy who has been in the Congress for so long. Um, he comes from a wealthy family. The Whirlpool um, company is, you know, his family's. And he says something as shallow as this. He believes, he, he hasn't done any research. He hasn't read anything, but just because we are Muslim and Armenians are Christian, we did it, is his opinion. So um, yeah, unfortunately in the Midwest, we have to deal with, um, some people like this. Yeah. I just think that we have to, you know, like, I mean, unfortunately in America, if you live in America, because there's a lot, you know, like it's happening. And, um, and I think that is, we just have to um, educate maybe more ourselves and find more the things that we are agree. Um, is there any other question? Uh, there is a question for me. It's about um, Cenk Uygur. Um, yes, and you know his his top assistant is Anna Kasparian, um, who's an Armenian, and they ask her all the time, you know, why do you why do you work for Cenk? He's a Turk. They are all murderers, etc. I mean. Um, Yes, I may not agree with Cenk in 100% of issues, but like Jaylan said, what's more important is to find common ground and um, move forward, right? Rather than me trying to convince Cenk to think one way or another, I can join forces with Cenk and you know, move progressive ideas forward so that there are no hungry children in this country, so that all children get a good education. You know, I mean, um, so I'm still proud of him because he's a Turkish American. He He's out there, people listen to him. That's, that's my answer, Engin. Okay, well, thank you. And, um, and I wanted to thank you so much for taking time out for your busy schedules and joining us today to learn, engage, and challenge yourself to think, explore, and increase our community political activism. And thank you for all, all your questions and answers and being with us. I want to thank everyone as well. And I just want to remind everyone we have another political activism related uh, webinar organized by the Assembly of Turkish American Association, ATA.
Next Sunday, we are going to do at 2 p.m. We are going to talk about how to receive proclamations, how to use proclamations as part of political activism. So if you are interested, please join us next Sunday as well. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate yes. it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. This Thank was you fun. for inspiring other Turkish Americans. Thank you for running. Thank you. Thank you.